Now is the time for the question and answer sessions. So if you have a questions, you're welcome to ask. Eric will answer. Uh, I've got a few questions. Maybe I'll just take the first one. Subsequently, if you have time for me, I'll come back. You mentioned another 100 years. Therefore, I ask you a technical. This ship right now, can you last for how many more years? Mm. Even if you go on the land. As you know, naval arc, there are quite a number of naval arc here. But in your assessment, how many more years can this ship last? Okay, thank you. When we refurbished this ship, we said to the architects and the engineers, I would like to to keep it running for at least the next 30 years. Why 30 years? Because we have a 30-year lease in Bintan. So we try to match that. Now, again, how, what did we do to, to make sure that we can stay on for the next 30 years? Huh? Now, thankfully, a lot of people told me, Eric, you must preserve the heritage. Huh? So don't tear away all the cabins, just make them bigger and all that. I always said, no way, it's difficult. And thankfully, when we ripped off all the cabins, and there were a couple of photos in the slide presentation just now, you know, we actually found some termites. And not only that, we found a few rust spots. Yeah? So we are very thankful that we ripped off almost everything and we start from scratch. Yeah? So the interior is now, we, we're using a lot of non combustible material with insulation etc etc you know and wherever uh, the naval arc uh, told us to we reinforce with uh, combings with I, i'm sure you know that uh, not comb bukan <laughs> we we also uh, had additional columns built up you know things like that but at the same time we also had to demolish a few of the bulkheads but the bulkheads that we demolished were reinforced yeah, and I want to just add one more thing to this question. Now, when we took out some of the uh, steel, old steel, uh, much of this ship is done the riveted way. You all know the riveted way, not welded, you know, riveted. So, we are keeping those uh, plates that we cut off, and I'm going to cut into small little like, rivets, yeah, and I'm going to maybe mount them nicely, and they'll be wonderful souvenirs. Because many of them are 100 years old. Yeah, so that's how we, we arrange to make sure that it lasts 30 years. So basically, it's ripping as much as we have to, to make sure it is safe. And not only that, uh, after we did that, uh, the Bintan authorities required us to get um, a kind of a chartered engineer or, or, or PE kind of a group uh, to come and inspect, you know. So they checked our, our GA, they checked our records, everything. And thankfully, they, they found it to be ship ship. Yeah. So does that answer your question? Yeah. Uh, 30 years time, I, when, when, after 30 years, uh, come and look for me. I'll start with another 30 years. By then, I'll be what? Uh, 97. Uh. Yeah. Oh, it's young, uh, 97. <laughs> it's not too much. Yeah, not too much. Yeah, 97. About, about captain's age. Lah. <laughs> I couldn't resist that. <laughs> okay, thank More you. Question, thank please. you. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, Eric. Uh, out of curiosity, uh, can you share with us how much you pay for the boat? And uh, I think more important, <laughs> the next uh, question is uh, how much you spend to refurbish the, this uh Grand Lady of the Ocean. Eh? Uh, yeah, uh, uh, Grand Old Lady. Grand of, Old Lady of, of the, the Sea. sea. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. You asked that question because you want to donate, is it? <laughs> yeah, we welcome donations, you know. Yeah? We, you see that fish there with a very big mouth? Huh? You can drop your donations in there. <laughs> okay. Um, Actually, I'm a little bit ashamed to say, but okay, I'll, I'll, I'll save the details. You read my book that, that Rachel mentioned. You read my book when I publish it. It's finished. Huh? Uh, we're just adding some photographs. You read my book and you'll know a bit more details why I'm ashamed. Huh? But for tonight, I'll just mention that we actually paid uh, 900,000 euro for the ship. Now, at that time in 2010, the euro exchange with Singapore was about 1.92, if I'm not wrong. So it came to close to 2 million. 
So we, we round off, we say, yeah, we, we paid about two million for the grand old lady. So it's, to me, a, a bargain. Huh? But to some people say, hey, Eric, you overpaid, you know. Huh? Well, never mind, as long as, as long as we got it in our folder, yeah? Uh, if not, somebody else may have gotten it. Uh. Now, how much did we spend? Uh, the fish is still waiting. Uh. <laughs> Why you laugh? I'm serious. <laughs> okay, serious. Now, this is, you know, I said I was... Uh, the one-eyed man is king in the land of the blind, right? Huh? But really, I was, I was equally blind. When we bought the ship, two million, I asked the chief engineer then, huh? I said, hey, how much do you think we, it takes us to refurbish this, you know, to be a five-star hotel? Huh? Chief engineers, you know, they do this. Huh? Uh, maybe about five, five and a half million, no problem. So five and a half plus two million, seven and a half million. Boleh tahan lah. On. So okay, on. Then we realised that, hey, it cannot be on, on sea. It must be put on land. They put on land different, uh, more expensive. Uh. So we got the engineers come. Okay, put on land. Again, typical engineers all do like that. I think 11 to 12 million lah. Adoy. 11 to 12 million. How? Can or not? Okay lah. Give it a shot lah since it's, we already bought it. And nowhere to go. <laughs> then got to reclaim some more. <laughs> you know, if there's a piece of land, yeah, no need reclamation cost, no need piling up, 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 semua. Bukan? Betul tak? Ah, cakap lah. Suara... Quite the gate, betul tak? Betul, betul yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> 11, 12 million, not enough. Again, these things happen. 18 million. Aduh! I pengsan now. <laughs> when I awoke, <laughs> I said, 18 million. Ah. Never mind, lah, this is a calling. We must do it. 18 million, so be it. Go ahead. Not enough. So total to date, if we bring her up to opening on the 21st of April this year, which is incidentally Easter, Easter Sunday, but we probably have a three-day opening, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Eh? All of you are invited, eh? but as paying guests, okay? <laughs> hey, what your love? Huh? I have never been more serious. All of you are hereby cordially invited. Bring your own cordials. <laughs> yeah, and uh, bring your own cash. Huh? Okay, so <laughs> eventually, uh, to bring her up to opening day in April, it will cost us $23 million. 23. Yeah? I don't know why uh, some people say 27, some people say 25. I say no, no, 23. We must cap it at 23. Uh. All right, 23 with 104 cabins. Why 104 cabins? 104 years old. You got a one cabin free tomorrow. <laughs> Pay your own ferry or so, huh? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we are, we'll have 104 cabins and all the land facilities. Does that answer the question, sir? You're welcome. Some more, some more. Some more question? Ah. Still got how many minutes? One hour. One hour, wow, okay. If you don't mind, I will ask you questions. Yes. Uh, what about the engine and uh, shipping navigation equipment? Did you remind it or it's removed? Propeller, okay. rotor and stuff. Okay, the only navigation uh, equipment that was removed was a satellite dome, yeah, because it didn't belong to us, and it, it belonged, uh, I think, OM leased it, yeah. The engine, we are keeping it. It's a Fiat V18 engine. Yeah, capable of about, I think, was it 20 knots, uh, Captain? 20 knots, huh? Yeah. 
around about 20 knots uh, huh? single single engine huh? so we are keeping her that engine and we are converting the engine room the entire engine room into part of a maritime museum nice or not Hey, we are recording you know, on video, you no? Know, so every now and then you hear clap, ah, huh? uh, then people say, "Enna." <laughs> so we are keeping that, and a part of our wheelhouse will also be converted to the museum. And I tell you one very, very exciting thing to me. Now, before I bought the uh, MV Dulos at that time, I have never stepped into a full-size engine room of a ship. When I stepped in, I was awestruck, you know. So it's, it's really, I see my car, I thought, bizarre already, you know. This one, uh. <laughs> So, not only that, in the old days when they built this ship, the engine was in the, at what we call midship uh, position, yeah, right in the centre of the ship. So, from the centre of the ship, you have, you have the engine and the gearbox, and you have a propeller shaft that goes all the way to the stern and then the propeller. That propeller shaft is about 60 meters long. You know, 60 meters. And it is in a tunnel. You almost have to crouch. Yes, that's, uh, uh, Rashim is pointing it there. Huh? And you almost have to crouch before you can go to the end. When I did that walk, that 60 meter walk, I tell you, uh, my heart was beating because at that time it was still in water, you know. But today it's much safer, it's on land. Uh, there's no risk of, like Daryl said, flooding, you know. But we, are, we intend to do a tour where you can actually walk the entire length and we will dramatize. Yeah. There'll be smells, you know, there'll be people shouting, full speed ahead, you know. Yeah, uh, things like that, lah. Huh? And uh, we purposely dim the lights, make it so noisy, you know. Just to create that, 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 wow, that realistic. If we could, we make the ship do that also. Like this, like this, yeah. <laughs> but I think we can't. <laughs> yeah, so uh, that will be. And then, of course, the forward mooring station, which is uh, forecastle, you call it, right? Who knows what a forecastle is? What, which movie made the forecastle famous? Titanic, yeah, you know, they, they did this, huh? Yeah. I never watched Titanic, I dare not watch. <laughs> yeah, up there where Rashim is, right in front there, the forecastle. Yeah, we'll, we'll arrange something. But this is a problem because when the Titanic, uh, the two actors and actresses did that pose, they were facing the sea, the ship was behind her. But if they, they face the sea, who's going to be out there to take photo? <laughs> so probably we'll have a... a, a, a some arm put out and a uh, remote, you know, uh, like a selfie kind of thing, you know. And uh, then that you can really pose. Uh. Fun, right? Ah, the fun, yeah. <laughs> All right. Some more questions, please. Uh, Rachel, you mind answering that question? I, I shy, shy, lah. Because I, I was thinking maybe about $700 for the smallest room. Uh, and then, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. We don't say room, we say cabin. Why cabin? Ship, ma. Ah. So about $700 for the smallest cabin. And the biggest one, the, oh, yeah, I must tell you about this. Um, the Master Mariner Suite, which is the old captain's cabin. We have enlarged it. It is more than a thousand square feet large. It has two wings, not the flying type. Huh? <laughs> the two wings uh, that on one side, one wing, on the port side. You know which is the port side? Left side, yeah. So that side, <laughs> the port side. No, la, port side, this side. La. Ah, piney. So the bingong. The port side will be an outdoor dining with barbecue facilities. On the starboard side, the wing, you know what it'll be? Who can guess? Get another stay tomorrow. I do. How come this uncle know? Uh? Just now he said, give the right answer. Now second right answer. Two nights for you. Uh, do. <laughs> yes, a jacuzzi. Yeah, wonderful. And captain's deck uh, is on the seventh deck, seventh level. 
eighth level is our uh, uh, bridge, you know. Uh, uh, so you are really right on top of the world, uh, and you it's 360 degrees unhindered uh, view. How much you think can pay? Much more than thousand five, right? Bukan rupiah. <laughs> Sorry, you talk about this person. Yes, yes. Uh, actually, you, you look up there. There's the. Yes. This one? Correct, correct. Oh, okay. This one. Just actually above this one. Uh, above this one. And you see the wings there? Eh? Yeah. So the port side will be uh, outdoor dining. The starboard will be the jacuzzi. Yeah. He will be only one occupant on this deck. There's no more room. Uh, no, uh, no, no more room. Outside will be the funnel and we have our what we call MEP zone, uh, our air conditioning, etc., etc. Okay, come on. Some, some more, more question. So hey, I expect some questions. Ah, oh, yes, from yes. Uh, Quack again. Yeah, some of you, uh, seamen and and whatever, have you all from the ma uh, maritime fraternity must ask. Uh. I have a ninety-nine question. <laughs> I asked one. Suck it to I me. I got ninety-eight. <laughs> if you redo again, or oh, I put it the other way. If there's a project in Singapore, somebody want to do something similar to what you had done, get an old ship, turn into a floating hotel, turn into a museum, turn into an education platform, and want to have it in Singapore, what will you advise him? You want the truthful answer or the the magnanimous answer? <laughs> no, firstly. If I don't want competition, I say, don't be a fool, don't be stupid like me. Huh? But the honest truth is that you must have the resilience. Yeah, In Singapore now, okay, maybe I should add something. Huh? Eric Saw is a non-entity. Nobody knows me here. When I submitted my proposal right up to Prime Minister Lee Hsien Loong, who is this fellow? Never heard of him before. To know true or not. So if I had that sort of uh, background, uh, my, my reputation, if you like, I'm sure I would have gotten a site. Uh. Honest, this is my personal view. Uh. Yeah? But because nobody knows me, I, and thankfully I, I didn't get it because it might have been too costly for us. But if somebody has deep enough pockets and more importantly, I believe the passion to see it through, then I think it will work. I don't think it's nice if you bought a ship and then you pass it to your project team comprising contractors, engineers, uh, naval architects, whatsoever, and then say, do as, do as you please. You know, give them a certain uh, mandate and certain uh, concepts and then do it. Then you, you don't get the fulfillment. Uh. I honestly get a lot of fulfillment by being so involved in this project. Uh. Today, uh, now, uh, my, I, I'm very blessed because we have a contractor who has been with me from day one and he actually put, put up a container cabin for me complete with aircon, complete with toilet facilities No bed, I sleep on the floor <laughs> yeah? But it's so comfortable and it's so convenient I can stay up there I work late into the night, you know, I, I, and I get so inspired because I'm right beside that grand old lady. You know, so it's, it's the passion that I think drove me on. But maybe somebody else who is doing strictly for business, maybe they do it some other model, some other way. For me, I, I always, my focus is get this done, get it running so that we can start having our profits to distribute. It's been a bit too long. Yeah, eight years has been is actually very long. But I don't know why one day I will know the reason why eight years. Right? So to any businessman I say if you want to treat it as a business venture, I think yeah, but if you if you want to do something like me, better talk. Maybe we can do a 50-50 JV again. <laughs> Never learned my lesson. <laughs> Does that answer your question? 
<laughs> no, I don't want to. Don't, don't, don't send another ship here. I, I can't afford the competition. <laughs> Some more question. Last question, please. So, Mr. Eric, can you actually lower your room rate to from <laughs> 750 to 250 per cabin? <laughs> it's too expensive for all of us. No, we will not lower the room rate. We will give a massive discount. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Yeah. Uh, the honest answer to that question is that uh, we we have not established the room rates. I have gotten uh, some comparative analysis done already, and uh, we have a steering committee. Yeah? Uh, Casey, where are you? Casey, uh, Casey is uh, one of the steering committee members. Uh, Captain, where are you? Yeah, he, that's another steering committee. The others, unfortunately, today have uh, some prior engagement. They can't come, uh, but I will be presenting to them. One of whom is actually a, a, a lecturer in the uh, in the uh, hospitality industry. You know, so he's giving us a lot of feedback, and I think it will be in the region of two hundred fifty. Uh. Plus or minus, more plus than minus. Uh. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you for reminding me that. Yeah. Pardon me if I'm asking some something which is uh, uh, extra or funny. No worries. So uh, just out of curiosity, uh, can you share with us uh, how how did you do the deregistration and the re-registration of this vessel? Okay. And uh, what are the obstacles that you encounter? All right. Maybe it's uh, beneficial for us or every one of us. Thank you very much. I will answer that question only you, if you promise me you won't buy another ship to convert into a hotel. Huh? <laughs> yeah, okay. It was actually a, a, a very difficult uh, process. Uh. You know, we, we went to MPA. We said we want to deregister her. Yes, you can. But you're still floating on water. We were in JSML shipyard in Tuas. But you're still floating on water. So you must have some form of registration. And you must be flagged. Yeah? You know, you guys know what flagging is. It must be flagged by a certain country. La. So you, the, the, it's like citizenship. La, of, of, uh, huh? Am I correct to say that? Roughly. La, huh? yeah. So to deregister her and then re-register her as a what? Because she was a passenger ship. So we, we took that uh, classification off, but she was still under RINA, uh, class under RINA. Uh, so RINA suggested, call it, uh, we classify her as a dead ship. So the mati punya kapal. Kapal mati, ini owner pun mati. <laughs> yeah, I, I hope you understand that. <laughs> so, so that's what we did. We deregistered her, classified her as a dead ship. Now, just just again, uh, sidetrack. Like, I like to sidetrack, you know. Like, huh? A lot of people say, Eric, how can this iconic vessel, how can dead ship? I said, don't worry, let her die. She will resurrect one day. Amen? Amen. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So we classified her as a dead ship, but we had to flag her. We went to, Ayo, I can't even remember, some islands that are, are now in the process of sinking. Uh, I forget the name of the island. Uh, Quack, do you know? Uh, Trivoli or Trivoli? Or, uh, uh, Triv Trivalu, Trivalu. Trivoli is a restaurant in Singapore. <laughs> yeah, Trivalu, you know? Uh, then to no avail. Finally, we got her temporarily registered as a Mongolian ship. <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah, it was only the, the Mongolian uh, uh, embassy here that was willing to, to take her, you know. So she was registered as a Mongolian, uh, under a Mongolian flag rather. And uh, she stayed that way all the way until we left Bat uh, Singapore to Batam. And from Batam, we completely deregistered her, but we had to get what we call a fit to tow uh, 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 certificate. Yeah, you all know that. Wow, you're nodding your head, huh, lady. So you know that. Good. So we had to get a fit to tow so that we could tow her from Batam 
to Bintan. So when we arrived at Bintan, uh, I think about two weeks maybe after arrival of Bintan, we completely deregistered her and called her a building. Yeah, so today she has no flag, she has no registration, she's not classed in any society, she's just a building. Yeah, but it was it was a tough one. Yeah. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Some more questions? Oh, thankfully I could answer. Oh, my heart got to bark got to boo. <laughs> Probably we will close on this. Hey, no, no fun. What do you we will have a lot of fun so personally What's on the, the time? dinner. We are supposed to wait 7 to 8. 7.45, 7.45 to 8.30, it's only 8.15, tabule! Ah, I got questions there. Okay, you have a question. <laughs> uh, on the mic, so that the, the video can pick it up, please. Hi, um, speaking as a model, hobby builder. Oh, you're a model? Yeah. <laughs> what, 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 what? what? <laughs> I was wondering if you could, is there any possibility you, you guys could come up with a skill model of this? Wow. Thank you. Uh, can I pass the buck back to you? Because as a hobbyist, maybe you can create some model for us. Yeah. And we'll pay you uh, one rupiah per model or something like that. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Huh? I'm serious. We, we actually, you know, the Dulos, the MV Dulos had a scale model, but made out of paper. You know, it was flat, you know and it came in a box and when you take out you tear a bit here you fold here you put a bit of glue you know and it became very beautiful very uh true to scale and it was very exciting unfortunately i had only one i retrieved when i was walking around the cabins after i bought the ship and some parts were already missing but it's still in my home so i've been asking captain but they are tak peduli lah uh, tak peduli means he didn't no, no, he he peduli lah. Only he uh, didn't have the time yet. I've asking him. I've been asking him to help find out from the previous OM people who were the guys who did the die cut. You know, uh, so then we will give them the new GA, the new configuration, uh, so that they can do something. And now it will not be that tall only, you know, because the five and a half meters that was underwater is now fully visible on land. So it's going to be a nice tall ship. Shook that. Shook, shook, shook. A bit tangan tak shook. Ah, mulut saja shook. So good. If you have, you know anybody, you know, contact us, please. Since you are a hobbyist, you know. Yeah. Next question. My question is much simpler. It's about how to reach the venue, and if you plan to advertise internationally about this special hotel which is not really common worldwide thank you uh, if, if you can drive there I mean I, I, you, you drive I'm sure you do right you can drive there if you have an amphibian <laughs> okay seriously um, the most convenient way now is from Tanamera ferry terminal you hop into a fast ferry a very nice luxurious ferry and you reach uh, Bintan Resorts, uh, that what they call BBT, Banda Bentan Talani Ferry Terminal, within one hour. And from there, you can either take a short walk or when we are open, we can have buggy service. Within three minutes, you are at our site. Later, if you look at the uh, photos and the video again, you'll see that we are very close to that ferry terminal. Now, there is another alternative coming, and that is an international airport in Bintan. Uh, it is in the process of being developed now. It is a joint venture between the Salem Group and, I, if I'm not wrong, with uh, Garuda, you know, you know. So, it's supposed to open 2020. So when it's open, uh, you can fly in from any part of the world because it is actually an international airport. Yeah, of course the amphibian is still an option. <laughs> yeah. Now there is, um, of course, another way from Batam. Those of you who may want to be in Batam first and then come over, uh, you may not remember. Let me just say it. From Batam, you go to a, a, a ferry terminal called Pongor. 
From Pongor, you take a fast speed boat. Yeah, 15 minutes you are at uh, Bintan, and from Bintan you take a half an hour drive. You're at our site, but that's the more inconvenient way, the most convenient, and that's what I do every every time I go to Tanamera. Tanamera, one hour I'm there, and you don't lose any time because we are one hour dif- ahead of. Yeah, you leave at eight eight ten. You arrive there eight ten still. Uh. <laughs> Just don't come back. <laughs> yeah. Some more question. Yeah, we still got time. Then eleven minutes and. 23 seconds. Every second counts. So, yes. Quack, are you starting? You are planning to buy one to be my competitor, is it? Yes, yes, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know that any vessel whose similar concept that you have had turned into a, on the dry land and turned into a hotel? I don't want to know. <laughs> for in yeah. short, in all. Um, the truth of it is I cannot remember but there is a ship somewhere in China I saw it on the net I can't remember the name uh, now but the funny the, the thing is it is different from us it is more in a like in the grave dock you know uh, it is in a, like a dry dock because they dig a trough and then they pull her in and then probably they covered her up so she's visible up to the water line the draft line you know whereas we are fully above her you know so i think in in as far as our concept is concerned fully exposed uh, from bottom of the hull to the tip of her mast uh, probably we are the only ones uh. but there is one ship at least in china i cannot remember now of course the queen mary which is at Long Beach, California, uh, she is still in water. Uh, although there is a, a, a bund, uh, B-U-N-D, uh, surrounding, and she's in, in like a private waters like that, but she's still afloat. And beside her, if I'm not wrong, there is a Russian submarine. If you talk about ships, there are plenty of them which stay on shore. Mikasa in Japan, uh. it's fully on shore, but it's not hotel, of course. Okay, but how big is that ship? Big. It's eighteen thousand ton displacement. Wow. Okay. It's a battleship. I, I don't want to know. Oh, battleship. Yeah. Okay. Keep no, on no, fighting. No, it's battleship. It's yeah. Keep on fighting. <laughs> All right. So, um, yeah, I think there is a uh, uh, quick. Maybe if you happen to Google and you find out something, let us know. There is a uh, another one. It's built like a ship. Up on a hill in Korea, right? Uh, but it's a concrete uh, building. Uh, I, I, if it is not, then it must be Noah's Ark. You know, how did it go up to the hill? Uh, up on the. <laughs> Some more questions. We've still got eight minutes. Hi. Hi. Uh, you, about getting to your uh, spot over there, you mentioned ferry and things like that. Uh, is there any plans of maybe having a few pontoons so that people with private boats can go up there mm. and uh, berth so we save a lot of hassle? Thank you. Wow, that's an excellent question. Excellent. Now, if you see the photos later, you'll find that we have a bay that is created by virtue of our, uh, our reclamation out. Uh, huh? Now, in that bay, as I mentioned uh, very briefly just now, I intend to actually do another uh, reclamation out like a spit and then almost enclosing the entire bay, just leaving an opening for, for vessels to go in and out. Now, in there, uh, besides having that uh, training center I mentioned about and some what we call pondoks, uh, which are like little huts uh, or, or villas, uh, uh, to supplement the number of cabins in our ship. Besides all that, we want to have some mooring facilities, private mooring facilities. So people with yachts, people, you know, I'm a member of RSYC, Republic of Singapore Yacht Club. You know, recently, not too, a few months back, I think, they had a, a group of uh, boaters go all the way to Bintan. I can't remember which part of Bintan. I mean, I don't, I don't boat myself. Yeah. And uh, 
there are, there are many people who are interested in doing that. They they take their beautiful yachts and then they go in there. They 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 mow it. Then maybe they come up. They have dinner. You know, and they are welcome to sleep in their yachts or they can sleep in our cabins. Yeah, and it's it's very interesting. It can be a a, a kind of a little escapade, like, if you like. Yeah, so that's you know in the pipeline, but the fish is still waiting because we don't have. <laughs> Tak cukup buang lah, Pak. <laughs> you know, very, very interestingly, my contractor was just asking me, I think maybe three, four weeks ago only, Pak, kenapa saya tak mau taruh helikopter? <laughs> yeah. So, if if we have a helipad, uh, the truth is, I would rather have the helipad on land than on the ship. Uh, I mean, it's a bit of a hassle. Uh, cost is also going to be very much higher. And a little bit... I, I'm not a... I'm not a aviation... Uh, uh, what do you call I, I don't like it. Huh? So, I'm a bit worried. You know, I have a helipad. People sleeping. Oh, what is that? <laughs> yeah. So, we probably... Uh, and uh, probably in a few years' time, I'll need a topi. And then if the helipad comes, you know, the, wow, my topi flies away. That's <laughs> uh, Yeah, okay. So, helipad, maybe phase three. <laughs> phase two will be the, the, the little marina, private marina. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, if it's don't have any more questions, we will come to close this interesting talk. And first of all, let's applaud to the Mr. Eric. Thank you. We were excited to learn your story. Thank you very much.